Hey there folks, TechnicalNerd91 here, coming to you from my Macintosh uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch, early 2011 model. Um, and I would really like to show you guys exactly, I got just got a, re um, a request in from one of my neighbors that follow my YouTube channel. And they want to know how to burn a copy of an ISO file on the Mac because there's a big difference between DMG and ISO. DMG's Mac's file format system and ISO is Windows uh, PC, your standard PC file format system. And instead of bringing the Mac over, the, over to the house and showing them, I decided to uh, show everybody else on the internet how to do it. So, what I'm gonna, sh if you don't know already how to do it, m most cases for ISOs this will work. Um, to burn any regular files this will work. There might be an ISO you get off the internet that won't work this way, but for the most part, if you burn a Windows ISO, you put it into your machine, it'll start up like normal. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here. This is my Windows Vista copy. And I'm going to want to highlight all of this. Just uh, click on one point of the screen, drag over as I did. Highlight all of it. Click on one of the icons. So, two, two fingers is a double click. There we go. And you're going to want to get, you have um, a bunch of options here. Uh, open, open with, there's no programs. Um, get info, that tells you all your properties and of everything here. So you can see each one has a specific, um, specific amount of uh, um, storage. This one's 4.6 gigabytes, 28, 39. 12, 440K, 15, 2K, and 111. They're just, uh, it's mostly the icons and some of the little upgrade files and support files that they have in there. But your sources, which is your drivers, your main EXE files, everything, is 4.6 gig gigabytes. So let's go ahead and close all of these, if we can. The thing I like about the Mac is it's so efficient. Instead of having properties of everything, you have individual brick, broken down properties that they just included in the software to read it that way, which is pretty cool because if you want to know a root cause, so let's say you have um, Led Zeppelin or um, you have Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and one's bigger than the other, most of the time in Windows Vista, it never gave you dual property. It gave you property of both in one screen. So you didn't know which one had the bigger file mass and how much more storage it had. So that's pretty cool how in OS X they include that. Anyway, so to get back to burning your ISO image in OS X using Finder, double click, like I said, burn eight items to disk. And you have to do it this way. So to insert, or to begin, insert a blank disk. When you insert the disk, it'll ask you to rename the disk. If you rename the disk, that's fine. If you don't, then just leave it. It'll, it'll do all the same thing. You'll have it burnt in approximately two to three minutes, depending on the size of the disk. And um, that's it. That's all. So I'm just going to cancel this because I don't need to burn it. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's how you burn an ISO file. This has been another Macintosh video brought to you in part by Technical Nerd 91 for all your quick Apple hints, mix or uh, fixes, and quick um, commands. Or I don't know. Please visit my channel. Subscribe um, to me. Uh, www.youtube.com/forward/slash Technical Nerd 91, and I will see you guys on the other side.